Afternoon, everybody. You are listening to Four Point Stance, Fox Sports 1340 AM, WHAP's leading women's tackle football talk podcast. My name is Ashley Edmiston. Uh, You would actually know a lot of my work. I'm a video editor for the station, so I do a lot of Mike Pierman Sr. stuff, a lot of Josh, Joshua Vincent stuff, and various other videos here and there. And this time, it's my turn, and I will be discussing with you just in general on these podcasts my expertise, which is women's tackle football. Uh, a little bit about myself. I'm actually a defensive tackle for the Portland Fighting Shockwave in Portland, Oregon on the West Coast. I've been playing for eight years. And right now I am coming to you live from Orlando, Florida. I'm participating in the Women World Games, which are going to be at the ESPN Wide World of Sports in Orlando, Florida from January 25th through the 29th. And I just got done with doing trials uh, for Team USA to compete in the IFAF Women World Championship, which will be held in Vancouver, BC, Canada. And right now, trial two is going on for the group of people that didn't show up to the first session. So to kind of give you a little bit of a rundown of what we had numbers-wise... They were estimating, considering in the past, at least in the 2013 tryouts, they had roughly about 200, 250 people try out. Well, this year, they decided to split it into two trials to see if maybe more people would show up. And session one that I was in, there was only 60 of us. And session two that's going on right now, there's approximately 100. So, definitely down from what they estimated, but there's 160 of us competing for 45 spots. I know in my session, there was seven of us. There was six of us for sure, defensive tackles, but there was a total of 10 D linemen that were competing for a total of seven spots. You had your starting four and your three backups. So we won't find that out until about mid-February where if we make the team or who's making the team in general. So, let's kind of get into this. So, yeah, I gave you the numbers and everything. What's been very interesting about this trip so far is the first day I was here, that that Friday, no big deal. It was check-in. Saturday, we were doing good. It was hot. I mean, I definitely have a sunburn. I'm not going to deny that. Definitely got a sunburn. But then on Sunday, it got very interesting. We had thunderstorms reported coming to the area towards kind of the later part of the day. when We were going to be doing our 11 on 11 part of the trials. So we had to have our session modified. We ended up doing about 90 minutes of 7 on 7 prior to having about 30 minutes of team individuals. And then we were off for 30 minutes to rest. And then we went straight into 11 on 11. And pretty much did the remainder of that. And we were done by noon. We had to be. Because thunderstorms were coming. So by the time I got back to the hotel, got showered, got lunch, um, all before the Green Bay Atlanta game started, um, we had some thunderstorms in the area. Then I was pretty much in the hotel room resting, trying to relax. Live tweeting the game. I'm sure a lot of you probably enjoyed seeing those live tweets. And as soon as the game was over, we were issued a tornado watch. Now, for those that don't know, a tornado warning tells you when the clouds are potentially set up to have a tornado. A tornado watch means that there is a tornado in the area. And I do have some pictures, I do, or at least a picture of... What the news was showing at the time, in between, especially the Pittsburgh-New England game, every commercial chance they got, they would show us updates about what was coming in the area. And around the time that we had a tornado watch, they sent a image out that showed where the funnel cloud potentially was. And in that time frame, there actually was a touchdown about 30 miles uh, northeast of where I'm currently staying. And it was EF0 is what was reported. So, talk about some scary stuff. Um, I know a lot of people coming for session two were delayed. I had some teammates that were flying into Orlando, had to be 
had to have their flight land in Panama City and then had to wait a couple hours before they could even arrive to Orlando again once the weather passed. So, And there was even some people that were rumored to have their flights canceled and didn't show up until yesterday morning. And so it's been very interesting with the weather so far. Um, looking at what has been released by the NFL... They have a whole list of stuff going on because, as you know, the Pro Bowl is happening here at the same time. It's going to be in the Camping World Stadium, which was formerly known as the Orange or the Citrus Bowl, uh, just on the other side of Orlando. But at ESPN's Wide World of Sports Complex, they've got tons of events. You've got, let's see, looking through everything that's on ESPN or NFL's website. The AFC and NFC team practices are happening. You've got what they call the Pro Bowl experience. So there's like 40-yard dash for kids, airbrush tattoos. They have Madden 17 going on. They have a long snapping uh, challenge, an obstacle course, Pro Bowl trophy photo op. They have touchdown celebration uh, gifs happening. So you can try to do your own Antonio Brown if you want. If you want. Or you can try to do a Martellus Bennett. That works too. You got virtual football. They've got their NFL shop trailer going to be there. Later on, they're going to have a Pro Bowl skill showdown, uh, which is going to be quarterbacks and receivers trying to show the best hands. There's going to be a dodgeball tournament, power relay. There's precision passing. There's going to be tons of other events. There's the ESP. EA Sports Madden Bowl, Flag Football Championships, NFL Punt Pass Kick Championships. They've got the Under-18s and Under-19s North American Championships, the 5K Run. There's a parade going to be happening at Magic Kingdom. Special Olympics is going to have a flag football game. And then, of course, bringing it back to women's football, there's the Women's World Football Games. And on your screen, you're going to see a little blurb that NFL.com released saying that the Women's World Football Games is a gathering of top players and coaches from women's tackle football around the world in the U.S. national team trials and in the careers of football forum. The games themselves will be Friday, January 27th, 5 p.m., and Saturday 28th at 12 and 3.30. On the other hand, for like as a player, I've got practice on the 25th. And it's all tentative, but and we know who's kind of going to be our guest speakers, but like we've been instructed as players to kind of keep it on the hush, so I can't give you any information about that. Sorry, but as it's released, I'm sure I can get more information out to you guys. Um, obviously, going to be here for the Pro Bowl. Uh, Fox Sports 1340 AM will be covering it. We've got, we're going to be there in the middle of it, you know, doing our thing. Which means more video for me to edit. Awesome. And, yeah, that's pretty much kind of the rundown for what's going on here for Pro Bowl weekend and women's football in general. I know a lot of people that did not attend, there's a lot of practices happening. I know right now... Well, not right now, but last night at least, my team had one of their classroom meetings. Obviously, I couldn't make it because it's clear across the country. But, oh well. <laughs> you know, it, this is what happens when you have to travel. I mean, it's not really any different than some of the stuff that NFL players have to do, other than the fact that they do get paid. That's kind of one thing a lot of people don't understand is I am considered professional, but I don't have the benefits as the men have. So this whole trip kind of came out of my pocket as opposed to them using their endorsements or their checks from games and everything. That's the one big divide that happens between women's and men's football. So the main purpose of this show, Four Point Stance Women's Tackle Football Talk, is I was wanting to kind of highlight the main leaks, which is the Independent Women's Football League, the IWFL, the Women's Football Alliance, WFA, and it seems like we have a new league, not relatively new league, but a league that's definitely taken some key teams and is kind of making themselves a major league now. You have the United States Women's Football League, the USWFL coming in, and it was just released last night that they took two teams from the IWFL. 
looking at my list that I have written down of teams that I know for a fact that have switched, we got Carolina Phoenix, Baltimore Nighthawks, New York Sharks, Montreal Blitz. They were all with the IWFL, and they switched to the WFA. At least with the Sharks and the Blitz, their move was for lowering costs for the players, and that's one of the biggest things is cost. On the New Orleans crew and the Washington Prodigy, I'm not sure why they left. That is something that, like, obviously that was breaking news last night for a lot of us, and I'm still getting information on that. I'm not quite sure, but as I know more, I'll definitely bring that up. And the biggest thing is between these three leagues, we are looking at roughly probably 80 teams. So when I'm talking about matchups, it's going to be a lot of information. You're going to have a lot of games that if you're paying attention, you got a lot of games to pay attention to. Everybody else is used to NFL only having up to 16 games for the 32 teams. College gets a little more complicated if you follow multiple teams. Well, for this, for women's tackle football, I mean, you estimate that there's roughly 45 players, and I'm being really hopeful, 45 players, because I know some teams are lucky to get 15. They're even lucky to even field a full 11. And you multiply that by the 80 teams, you're looking at a lot of women playing. A lot. Pretty much, yeah, I really don't have anything else right now because trying to keep some stuff under wraps, trying to let stuff kind of build. Um, once I know more with the Women's World Football Games, that'll change some things. Uh, once the league releases the full schedules, we'll know more. I think the biggest thing is right now, we're still kind of in that preseason phase. I know a lot of us, I signed my contract a couple days ago. Uh, I know many other people are still trying to figure out where they're going to be. Some teams are still holding tryouts. And usually January is your floating time. February, you start getting a little more solid. And then March is when you got to get into it because, like, for us, April 1st is our first game. And April until July, that's how it goes. That's just how it goes. So for, especially in women's football, we have football all year round. As soon as the NFL's over, we're right back into it. As soon as we're over, NFL's back into it. So it's 365 days of football for those of us that are into it. Uh, I'm never, never a dull moment, let's just say that much. Um, just realized that, yeah, for the IFAF, I didn't really cover much on that. So the International Federation of American Football, IFAF, has the Women's World Championship. And the first games were held in 2010 in Sweden, and U.S. took gold on that one. Then 2013, they had it in Finland. It was originally going to be in Canada, but it was then removed quickly and put in Finland. U.S. took gold in that as well, but what was notable about 2013 is Germany became the first team to actually score a touchdown on Team USA. Prior to that, every other game had been a shutout. Now, what's very sad, and I remember watching the live stream of this game, is the score was 107-7 to in that game. But, at the same time, Germany did something that not even Canada has been able to do in the two times that they've met U.S. in the finals, is score a touchdown. The only, teams that, the only team we know for sure that's got their roster ready is Team Canada. That's the only one that's released it. We all found out about the World Championships happening because of Gridiron Australia. But... Team Australia has yet to release their information. From there, we don't know who else is coming. We don't know if Germany, Finland, Sweden, Spain. We don't know. So I think as we get closer, especially with... uh, It's going to be June 22nd through July 6th, I believe. As we get closer, I think we will learn more and more about which teams are involved, hopefully. And as I know more, I'll definitely be releasing more, especially through either my Twitter handle, which is... (laughs) <laughs> a lot of people laugh at this. It, uh, if you want to follow me on Twitter, I'm Weevil, which it's kind of like the bug, but it's spelled a little differently. If you want to find it, it's W34VI1. It's a long story why I have that Twitter handle. 
or definitely be posting it on Fox Sports 1340 AM, and definitely be keeping you up to the date on that. Um... Like I said before, mid-February, we should be finding out who's on Team USA. And we possibly could get more information from there. Oh, looking at my other information. Not really much information I can give you right now. I guess I could keep up on the screen for you. Is a map of the Pro Bowl week experience that they're having. Which includes our... Women's World Football Games on Field 29 and 30. And, of course, the AFC-NFC practices are on Field 16 and 17, as you can see. But other than that, there's really not much to uh, talk about, I guess. Um, If you have any questions about women's tackle football in general, or just want to know, like, potentially, like, oh, who's the team in your area... Send me a message on Twitter and just make sure you use the hashtag four as in the number four PT stance. And that way we know that it's for the four point stance show. And I'll either answer it directly or the next episode I have, I will answer it right there. I kind of do have a couple shout outs I'm going to give. I'm going to give to a. I got to get my Twitter feed up. Hang on. I do like to do a shout out to. Uh, my W Sports, I know that they definitely are a big help in women's sports in general. Definitely going to have a shout out to Baltimore Nighthawks because, you know, I met quite a few players here at Team USA, and I, I must say it's been quite fun. Um, former Coach Mason, he was saying that his blast coach coaching the women of Baltimore Nighthawks a few years ago. So, yeah, Baltimore, just more love to you. And, yeah, if you got any questions, let me know, and I will definitely try my best to answer them. If I can't answer them, then I know of plenty of other people in the league, on many other teams, because I've played for a long time in the way of football. So I know a lot of people, I know a lot of teams, um... Definitely get answers for you. So, I hope you enjoyed this episode, this inaugural episode of Four Point Stance, Women's Tackle Football Talk. Try to be back sometime next week when I get back from Orlando, and I'm back in Oregon, to kind of give a little more of an update of what's going on league-wise. I'm sure there's going to be tons more changes. There's going to be schedule changes happening, whatnot. Um... And yeah, definitely kind of give you an overview of what we are looking at for women's football in general this season. And otherwise, yeah, you got questions, send them to Fox Sports 1340 AM WHAP, or you can send them directly to me at Weevil, W34VI1 on Twitter. Just make sure, again, you have that hashtag for the number four PT stance. And we'll check you out. So you've been listening to Fox Sports 1340 AM, WHAP, the leading sports channel for women's tackle football, especially on the East Coast. Uh, My name is Ashley Edmiston, and I hope you all have a good week.